The first two sections of the Yoga Vasishta uh, are very much a preamble to the actual teachings. The first section is to do with dispassion and this section that we're in now is, is called the behaviour of the seeker. I'm not so sure that behaviour of the seeker actually conveys uh, the intent here. It's really the attitude of the spiritual practitioner is getting yourself set up for the, the teachings that are to come. <clears throat> for example, uh, Vasista has been talking about the importance of self-effort and you might think, well this is, this is a very uh, admirable term isn't it, self-effort. The self-effort is not going to get you to liberation. Um, you can try all sorts of so-called spiritual practices, but there's absolutely no guarantee any of them are going to lead you to liberation. And in fact, liberation can happen spontaneously. There are enough stories and various spiritual traditions that, that, that bear that out. Um, So the last few chapters of this section actually expand on something that was mentioned in chapter 11 and that is the, the, the four gatekeepers at the entrance to the realm of freedom uh, to do with self-control, spirit of inquiry, contentment and good company. But there was something, there's something else I want to look back at in that chapter that was chapter 11, to do with the grace of God, which I said something about at the time. Um, and I want to do this by way of making sure we've got the context, uh, we've got some positive and constructive idea of the total context here. We start off with dispassion. And the sister says this dispassion is surely due to the grace of God. Now dispassion is realising that all normal pursuits are inherently unsatisfactory. They're of no ultimate consequence. There has to be that conviction. In a way, this is what we might call an insight into the nature of conditioned reality. It's a conviction. And if you haven't got that conviction, if it's just an idea, then much of what follows isn't going to mean very much or be much relevance to you. Now he says it's surely due to the grace of God. You can't actually, this sort of thing just comes upon you. Um, it's not something that you can work towards. It's either something you feel or you don't. There's a bit of a quantum leap here. To, uh, you cannot work towards liberation. Liberation is like a quantum leap now. Quantum leap is one of these phrases which is coming to common common speech. Uh, it's, but it's a very important idea, really. The quantum leap refers to electrons in an atom. Elo electrons can apparently move in certain orbits around the atom. There are only particular orbits they can move in. And they can shift orbits from one to the other. And they shift without going through the in between the space in between, if they stop in one orbit and suddenly appear in another orbit, there's no approach from one orbit to the other. This is what's called a quantum leap, and you could say that liberation is like this. It doesn't matter how much effort you make, there's not there's not there's no guarantee that any of that's going to lead you to liberation. So what's all this self-effort? 
that the system was going on about. Well, you have to have what uh, the sister describes as the highest wisdom dawning in the heart. As long as the highest wisdom does not dawn in the heart, the person revolves in the wheel of birth and death. So this highest wisdom is to do with dispassion. There's no, there's no, um, it's something you either awaken to or, 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 or you don't, and that's it. Once you have awakened to it, then you start your work. Then you start your work of self-control, of inquiry, contentment, and finding circumstances that are conducive to your, to your work. I think this is why um, the sister, the sister, or the translator, Fenka Tesananda, might have mentioned the grace of God, because this is not something which is conditioned. It's not something which is dependent on conditions. It's something which either happens or it doesn't. Um, I think. If that seems a little bit unfair, well, all you can actually do then, all I suggest is that you're open to this possibility. In our culture, in Western culture, it's quite difficult because if you're in this state of dispassion, you might be diagnosed as uh, depressed or psychotic even. And um, the idea that you're, you're in a condition of divinely inspired dispassion doesn't really fit in with uh, modern diagnostic techniques. So, <clears throat> I think we can understand then this grace of God as uh, this quantum leap which, which can happen between one condition and another one condition of being and another. It's like when you wake up to the idea that perhaps reality is not much more than a dream or what we normally consider reality is rather pointless, meaningless. And, and rather than get depressed about that, we can be open to what the sister describes as the highest wisdom. So let's move on to chapter 13 where the sister expands on these four gatekeepers to the entrance to the realm of moksha or freedom. <clears throat> 